Hey everyone, it's Justice for Comics. I wanted to shoot a quick video on some books I got in um, late here on Friday. It's early, early Saturday morning here, so I am uh, kind of woke up early and uh, decided ah, I'll shoot a video. It's quiet, Nobody, nobody's awake in the house, so it gives me time to shoot a quick video. Um, one of the books I just got in the mail is Black Hammer Number 1. So this book is heating up a little bit. Um, it got optioned. I think that was recent news on that, maybe a week, I don't know if it was a few days or a week ago. It was announced that's being optioned. I don't know if it was for a movie or a TV series, but you know, it's, it's definitely gonna be made into something. I'm, I'm assuming either a TV series or a movie, but it it's probably makes sense for it to be more of a TV series. But um, yeah, so it's, I, Started looking for this online. Obviously, this has been sold out for a long time. It came out in 2016, so it's a couple years old. Um, I remember seeing it when it came out, and it looked interesting. I didn't know anything about Jeff Lemire. Uh, he was, you know, relatively unknown writer back then in 2016. He's certainly well known now, and yeah, you know, this series has really taken off. It's um, you know, issue number one has been a twenty-five to thirty-dollar book for a while now, and now that the op the movie or the the rights have been optioned for the series, you're seeing this uh, issue number one. Yeah, you know, I'd say it's going for fifty to sixty dollars in, in high grade, and one of the things that you can do is I I listed it I selected it as a newly listed, so. Sometimes people will list a, a book for sale and they don't they don't really realize that the the price has jumped up on it. So um, this was a newly listed. I mean, it was on. I probably caught it like within the first five minutes of it, of it being listed because I, I think it would have sold out. I mean, it, obviously it sold out quickly because I bought it, but I think I got lucky. Um, I got issue number one, the A cover. Super high grade. I mean, there's nothing wrong. It's definitely nine six or nine eight, and I got the B cover, so the the variant, um, both A and B cover of Black Hammer number one, for thirty four dollars free shipping. <laughs> it's the thirty four ninety five free shipping. So basically, I got these for like seventeen dollars a piece, uh, which is a fantastic deal. Even before. Um, the the uh, series was optioned, that would have been a good deal because, like I said, it was going consistently for about twenty five to thirty dollars for issue number one, the A cover. I'm not too sure what the B cover was selling for, maybe a little less, um, but still, um, for seventeen dollars a piece for both of these, that was a really really good deal. I got very lucky. Um, yeah, it's just if you got if you don't own this already you might be able to kind of do what I did, is just save that uh, on your eBay and mark it newly listed. And they will, eBay will notify you as soon as somebody lists a, a Black Hammer number one for sale. So that's what I did and I, and I got lucky. Um, you know, I think, I think it can be done. That's just one of the tricks of using eBay that you can sometimes uh, find a great deal by doing that, so. Yeah, Black Hammer number one. Uh, love having that. That's great. Um, another book I p had ordered, I think I had mentioned this in one of my last videos, Hellboy, full, A Box Full of Evil. This is the issue number two. Um, I've got issue number one coming. I should get that by Monday or Tuesday. Um, so this one I, I picked up for like eight or nine bucks. Um and I'm not super happy with it. it. It's hard to tell in this video, but it looks like it's in really good shape. But there's some, there's it needs a pressing. I mean, there's some a little bit of wrinkling on the cover. You know, there's no spine creases or or, or creases in the cover or anything like that. It's no, there's no color breaking. It's just, it, it just it could probably use a little pressing. Um, but it's overall it's in great shape. Without you know, if it didn't, if it just had a press, it'd be perfect. So. Um, yeah, I got a good deal on it, nine, eight or nine bucks, including shipping. So, uh, issue number one, I just I couldn't find the pair of them f 
for a decent price. So the only problem I have is issue number one, I had ordered two copies on Amazon. And I think my last video I had mentioned it was eBay. It was Amazon. And some of the, time, some of the problems with buying comic books over Amazon is you don't always get a picture of what you're buying. Uh, it just had the name of it and and it was a third party seller through Amazon. So, you know, I don't I don't get the Amazon free shipping or any of that stuff, but um so I had it bought two copies of issue number one on Amazon. I think I paid fifteen dollars for one and I think the other one was um thirty dollars. And one the one I paid for fifteen dollars for I got a notice back from the third party seller saying it was out of stock. Sorry, we didn't know. You know, they they probably realized that the the book was heating up. And this is the problem sometimes with buying through Amazon is a seller on Amazon. If they find out that the book is that they're selling is heating up, and that's why somebody's purchasing it, they'll just automatically come back and say, "Oh, it's out of stock." and we'll refund your money back. So <clears throat> I'm still waiting to get the refund back for the 15 bucks, but so I lost one of the issues. The other one is being delivered supposedly by Monday or Tuesday by Amazon. Uh, well, not by Amazon, but by the third party. So that's the other problem is it's not, you know, Amazon is just the facilitator of the transaction. They're not shipping it. They're not, you know, they, they, don't, they don't have it in stock. It's all through third party. And that's pretty much the case anytime you're buying a comic book on on Amazon is it's all it's all through a third party seller. Um, so I do have an issue number one coming. Hopefully it's in great condition. Um, it's the only thing I don't like about it. I I usually buy on eBay because I can see the book. I can review detailed scans of the book. Um, but you know, I got a good price on it. I don't think you can find issue number one for around thirty dollars now. It's it's selling consistently higher than that. I think it's anywhere from sixty to seventy five dollars now for that book. So Hellboy is a really tough book to find. Uh, any of their back issues. I mean, I go into local shops all the time, and anytime I'm there, I'll look through their back issue bin. You know, their their back issue boxes, and I'll look for any type of Hellboy book, and I rarely find one. Um, it just, they're not heavily printed, uh, they're condition sensitive. If you do find one, it, it, a lot of times it's beat up or it's got spine ticks. You know, you'll never find, I don't think you'll ever find a good conditioned Hellboy in a dollar bin. <laughs> no way. Uh, most of the Hellboy, um, books have dark covers. Just impossible to find in really, really good shape in those type of situations. So, um, you know, Hellboy, it, it's a if you've got a Hellboy collection, congratulations. I mean, it's I've got an, a decent one. I've got I don't have I certainly don't have every single series, but I've got several of the of some of the high ones. But um, you know, that's something that it's worth it's worth collecting. And if you can get a good deal, you know, try to hunt it out. But you're probably gonna have to do it on eBay. I don't I doubt you'll find it in a in a local comic book shop. So there's issue number two. Um, I went to a local shop today and I picked up some stuff I missed. I didn't get the Catwoman art germ variant in my monthly order, so I kind of just missed it. I, I didn't, I don't know why, I just didn't didn't select it. So while I was there, I was like, all right, I'll pick up one of these. It looks cool. I like the cover. I've been kind of, since issue number one, I've been buying the, the Catwoman variants, uh, the art germ variants, so... Um, this one looked pretty good too, so I decided I'll pick that up for cover price. Not bad. Um, I also, I mentioned in my last video I was looking for Deadpool number six, the A cover. Um, I did pick that up for cover price at the shop. And I think the reason this book is getting attention is because of a new character. Uh, what is his name? Oh, by the way, I love that um, cover of Silver Surfer, the, the defend, um, was it the Defenders? That Silver Surfer, I love that. I'm going to be buying that for sure when that comes out. Yeah, here he is. So this is a new 
kind of a cartoonish uh, character. I think his name is Kid Kidpool or something. Yeah, Killpool. Yeah, I don't know if I'm, I might be wrong about that. He's. It's kind of funny through the through the issue. It's he's kind of pops in and out. Um, does something silly. It. it it's kind of campy, no doubt. Um, yeah, this could be, I don't know, this could be a key, key issue. We'll see. That um, And there's the character right there again. So, yeah, he's got kind of has a big Joker smile, and he's he's kind of an altern alternate take on Deadpool. Um, yeah. Uh, for cover price, not bad. I mean, it, it, the series has been pretty good. Scotty Young, I'm, I'm sort of impressed of, of his writing on this. I've been collecting most of the issues. Um, he's done a good job. I definitely like him versus uh, I think Dugan was the previous writer on Deadpool. I, I like I, I like Scott Young a little bit better. Uh, last few things I picked up. So while I was at that shop that I picked up that Deadpool and the Catwoman, um, I also was looking through their back issues and they had a, a Batgirl number sixteen. This is the Middleton uh, B cover variant. Um, yeah, you know, nothing special with it. It's just kind of a cool cover. I've been been collecting most of the Middleton Batgirl covers. Obviously, number 23 is the one everyone should try to go get or find if they can. But, you know, that's a $70, $80 book now. Um, so you never know. These older Middleton variants could heat up. Um, I just got this for $4. I mean, it's, it's kind of what it's selling for on eBay. I think you can still buy it on eBay for around 4 bucks. So there's nothing... You know, it's not selling for a, a large premium over cover price. Um, so I picked that up while I was there. And now this I got lucky on. This was my find of the day. Um, in that back issue, they also had number 18. And this is the Middleton variant. And it's got Harley Quinn on the cover. So I guess because it has Harley Quinn and it's a Middleton variant and it supposedly has a very, very low print run. Um, if you go on eBay right now, this book is selling $35 to $40. Um, I, don't think there's an, I don't think there's one for sale below $35. And every one of the listings says it's a scarce low print run. So I don't know what the print run is on Batgirl. I know that Batgirl, prior to Middleton getting attention, I don't think it was a big seller. I think the print run... Um, was very low. It wasn't heavily ordered by a lot of comic shops, uh, and I know this because when I when twenty three came out, um, I knew that that was going to be a hot cover, and it took a lot of effort to track down four copies. <laughs> um, I didn't get any of I didn't get any copies from Midtown because uh, it had sold out too quickly, and the local shops. Um, I mean, I called around five or six shops, drove around town that day, the day it came out, and I was able to get four copies of Batgirl 23. Um, I kept two and I sold two. I s said this many times in my past videos. I wish I kind of wish I hadn't sold those two copies, but you know, I made pretty good money. I sold them for like thirty dollars a piece. So I think I paid for my week's comic books with those two sales, um, which you know, I guess is not a bad deal, right? It's pretty good. Um, but yeah, Batgirl was just, and, and all the comic book shops told me, oh yeah, we don't have anybody even subscribing to this. <laughs> so they didn't, you know, none of the shops ordered heavily on it. And I think that's also one of the reasons if you can, if you're at a local shop, um, that's the other thing I do besides looking for back issues of Hellboy. Uh, I, I quickly, if I go to, go into a new shop, I'll look through their, um, any, any Batgirl stuff. Uh, with Middleton variants, because I think it's worth picking up. I mean, there's is early issues in the 20, 21, Middleton, you know, they're, they go for $15, $20 pretty consistently. But this one, for some reason, is more scarce. And I think because it's got Harley Quinn on it, you know, it, gener it generates a little bit more activity on it. So, yeah, so that was one of the key things I picked up. Very, very happy to have that. It's in high grade, and I got it for $4. So, you know, pretty good deal. And it's going for much more than that on uh, on eBay. Uh, real quick, guys, I wanted to show you also a variant that's coming out. I just can't release today. 
And I kind of wish I could blow this up more, but I'll see if I can here. This is the Batman Who Laughs. Uh, number one, this is a jock alternative cover. Really, really cool. 30 bucks. Um, I don't know what the, they don't tell you what the print run is, the, what the print run of this is going to be. Uh, it's a store exclusive, I believe, with, um, with Unknown Comics. Let me zoom in a little bit better here in my video. Yeah, so you can kind of see here uh, what it looks like. Yeah, pretty cool. I mean, it's just a very cool image. Um, yeah, 30 bucks. I think it's worth it. I mean, I, I do think that Batman Who Laughs series, you know, there's a ton of variants for this thing. I mean, I think Unknown Comic Books alone has like three or four different st store-exclusive variants. Um, the regular, the two regular variants, um, there's a Capullo variant that's coming out on this. I think, you know, you've got this, uh, what's his name, artist Suyam, Suyan. So you got a Suyan variant, which, you know, that looks pretty cool. Back out of here a little bit. Um, you got the Jock variant. I think there was a couple more here. Let's see. Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, I know there's there's a lot of variants on that. Batman Who Laughs. Um, let me just see if I can pull up an image real quick. All right. Um, yeah, so I think that's the regular jock cover. That's that's the A cover. Yeah, so I think I have that. I pre-ordered that uh, through Midtown. And then there's also a... Yeah, here's the Capullo variant. Uh, that's the B cover. I also pre-ordered that. Um, yeah, there's just a, there's a lot of... I think that's an image inside the book. That's a Jacques, yeah, Jacques doing the interior artwork, I believe. And that's pretty cool. That's, so that's who's on the cover of that um, special Unknown Comics variant. You know, the original, this was the original Batman Who Laughs cover, that one shot that came out when they were running that uh, DC uh, Dark Knight's Metal. Oh yeah, here's, here's the uh, Matina variant. So that one looks pretty cool. I like the coloring on that. Um, that one's pretty badass. I like Matina. Oh yeah, there's probably the best cover I've seen. That's a Matina cover. That is so cool. And that's, you know, that's a $200 book now. I mean, I think it's been a $200 book since it came out. I mean, it's a virgin cover. I think that's the virgin cover. I don't know. I may buy that eventually. If I, if I could ever get a good deal on it, um, that is just... I think the last couple of years, that is one of the scariest cover images I think I've ever seen, it is that cover. Um, I think that that is an iconic, creepy, <laughs> scary looking cover. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if I could get that book, if I get that a virgin copy of that in high grade, raw high grade for under $200, I think it would be a good purchase. Uh, I just, I love that cover. I mean, I just think that's one of the, you know, I think decades from now that will be considered a very, very iconic, um, cover for, for DC. Um, yeah, there was a, a there was a, um, the lotto cover, I think coming out too. Uh, see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, here we are. That one's pretty cool, too. I mean, I like the red and black. I'm a sucker for a red and black cover. Um, so that's another... I think that's Bulletproof is the, the one that's offering that. So, you know, a lot of these are... You know, a lot of these stores, they do a variant set where you can get a trade dress and a virgin for 50 60 bucks. 
Um, or you can buy the trade dress alone for for maybe twenty. But there's a ton of yeah, you know, there's a ton of these covers, so you, you just buy what you like. I mean, you just realize, you know, you're probably spending money. Most of these variants don't go up in price. I mean, just that's my opinion. Most of them don't, unless you know, unless it's something that's just really, really short printed, like that Batman Who Laughs, uh, Matina cover virgin there was a very limited run of that and that's why that book is so hot plus it's just a crazy scary image <laughs> that makes it that makes a demand for that book very very strong so uh, remember you know that's just the key to anything is when the demand is a lot stronger than supply you're gonna see a good a good price go for that comic book so or for anything um but yeah that's uh, those are the covers, you know, so you're just be careful, you know, you're buying these things for 30, 40, 50 bucks. Um, you know, realize that they probably won't appreciate much more than that. I mean, I remember, you know, here's another cool, this is a Dark Knight, Dark Knight's Metal, you know, variant cover done by Matina. You know, it's pretty cool, but, you know, it was, I think when it came out, it was like a $25, $30 book. It's still $25, $30, so... You know, it's just some of them don't, you know, most of them don't really go anywhere. Um, so just be cautious when you buy those. You know, try to, try to buy what you like and fully realizing if it doesn't ever go up in value that you're okay with that. Um, but yeah, I definitely think I want to get that, <laughs> that cover. I mean, it's just, it's just one of those things like you just stare at it and you go, my God, you just can't look away. <laughs> It's crazy. I don't know. I don't let me know what you guys think um regarding some of the books I picked up, um what you think of these covers. Yeah, I think they're a Batman who laughs is definitely going to be around a long time. Obviously, the reaction, the fan support for the character was big and DC kind of knew that and that's why they're developing this 6 issue miniseries. I doubt that's the end. I, you know, I don't think that'll be the end of the, the Batman Who Laughs. I think you'll see him used quite a bit in the DC Universe. Uh, he's just a really cool villain. And, you know, I'd like to see him maybe in, like, the um, Legion of Doom or something. You know, him and him and the Joker, <laughs> the, you know, just teaming up. I mean, that just could be crazy. Um you know, maybe he's gonna. Maybe the Joker's gonna make an appearance in the series. I, I don't know. I don't really know what the total plot is yet. But um, yeah, it's a cool, cool character, creepy, and I think it's. I think he's gonna be in the DC universe for a long time. Is my opinion. But oh, real quick, the last thing I didn't show, probably the most important thing I wanted to show. I know this video is a little long here, guys. Sorry about that. Um, I got today in the mail, I'm gonna have to zoom out, this thing's big. This is the Bloodshot Rising Spirit. Um, this is the e-cover, this is the glass variant. And I just got this in the mail. This thing was wrapped really well. You know, I, that, that's the only problem with this thing is it's, it's, it's literally glass. <laughs> I, 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 this video is probably not gonna do it justice, but it's a thick piece of glass and this book is heavy I mean it weighs it probably weighs it's got to be close to a pound I mean this is it's, it's definitely the heaviest comic book ever made in my opinion there's just no way you could find a heavier comic book than this so I put this in a really nice um, Silver Age Mylar and then I put it in this nice thick top loader and you know seal the top of it with some tape so it doesn't slide out. And, you know, this thing is just heavy. You know, I want to make sure it's in good shape because um, it's glass. <laughs> if this thing, I still feel like right now if I drop this on the floor, it might it might shatter. Um, even though I've got this protective border with the top loader and I've got it in a mylar. Um, you know, it's... But one thing that's interesting on these is I'm wondering if any of these get graded... Uh, by CGC or any other grading company, you know, are they going to grade really high? Um, you know, 
it's the cover basically is has to be mint because it can't be I mean it's either going to be mint or it's if it's cracked then obviously it'll be a lower grade but um pre I'm pretty pretty sure most of these are going to be 98s right because they're just the way they're produced it's just like those lenticular covers that came out you know almost all of them are 98s because of the way the book was produced it's just it's almost impossible not to get a 98 um and I think this is the same same thing with these these uh, this glass cover. What's interesting too is the corners are not sharp. They're sort of um, they're purposely blunted a little bit. I guess that's the process of how they made the glass. Um, from what I read on it, it's supposed to be really really strong, uh, not easily shattered or broken. So I don't know what the process of the glass is and and how they made it, but um, you know, it's still, it's a very solid piece of glass and I'm being very careful with it. <laughs> so, uh, it's pretty cool. I haven't read the story yet. Um, but what I, from what I hear, it's okay. The story's okay, but I just wanted to own, you know, and I probably paid too much. I, I think I paid 280 bucks for it. Um, at the time it was selling 300 to 350. So, you know, I think at the time I thought, all right, I got a pretty good deal. I got it below what most people were paying. Um, I go on I go on eBay tonight though, and I see that it's selling around two hundred thirty <laughs> to two hundred fifty. So yeah, you know, that that's just a good lesson. And when you buy something, um, it you know it's easy to get buyer's remorse, right? Oh shoot, I I, I I'm this the book's selling for fifty dollars less than I bought it for. Well, I don't plan on selling it anytime soon. I like the fact that it's the first glass cover variant. Uh, it's very unique. Um, you know, Bloodshot also was the first foil cover. A lot of people don't know that. I think it was Bloodshot number zero was the very, very first foil covered produced comic book. And it's interesting that this is now the very first um, glass cover produced comic book. But I don't think you'll see a lot of company. I don't think this is going to be a trend. <laughs> um, I'm sure the process to make this cover in the glass was expensive. Um, you know, this was a one in 250 variant. So there's probably not a ton of these out there. But, you know, if you go on eBay, there's, I think there's at least a dozen of these for sale. So it's not like it's, it's really hard to find. Uh, I think if that was the case, this thing would be going for a lot more than, 230 to 250 dollars but um yeah so right now i'm down in value on it but um i don't mind i don't care i'm not looking to sell it it's just i i like owning something that's unique and this is the first glass covered comic book um and it may be the last <laughs> i don't i don't know if they're gonna if any other company would even dare to do this um I can tell you right now, if Marvel did one of these, all of them would be shattered, <laughs> or most, or there'd be some chipping on it, or there'd be a crack in it. You know, Marvel can't seem to make anything uh, too well. So, you know, it takes a smaller company to kind of get it, hopefully, right. And this one looks like they did it right. I mean, it's pretty cool. So I'm happy with it. It's pretty nice. It's just storing it. Yeah, I mean, it's I have to store it like it's a magazine type book because it's. I want to make sure it's really, really protected. I mean, it's it's a piece of glass and I don't really know how strong that glass is. I'm not going to test that out. <laughs> so it won't be going into a regular comic book box, that's for sure. But that's about the video I wanted to show. I just want to kind of highlight those books, everybody. And, you know, please let me know what you think. Uh, I know this video is extremely long. I appreciate your patience if you stayed with me through the entire video. Congratulations. <laughs> um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my video. Uh, hit the bell for notifications, and please leave me a comment. I would love to hear your comments on this recent comic haul. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. I will be posting another video next Wednesday highlighting the comic books coming out the following week. All right, thanks, guys.